Here we'll learn the different fates of pyruvate, which is the product of glycolysis. To begin, start a table so we can list four key fates of pyruvate. The first is acetyl-CoA, which is a substrate for the citric acid cycle and fatty acid synthesis. The second is oxaloacetate, which is an intermediate in the citric acid cycle and also a substrate for gluconeogenesis. The third is lactate, which is produced by eukaryotes in the absence of oxygen. And the fourth is ethanol, which is produced by yeast and some bacteria, including intestinal flora, in the absence of oxygen. We'll illustrate the location and function of each of these processes. To begin, indicate that pyruvate is a three-carbon molecule and that it's formed in the first step of glucose metabolism, glycolysis. Two pyruvates are formed per glucose molecule, but we'll only illustrate one for simplicity. Show that this occurs in the cytosol. Show that we categorize the pyruvate fates based on if they are aerobic or anaerobic, meaning whether they occur in the presence of or absence of oxygen. Next, show that in aerobic conditions in the presence of oxygen, pyruvate has two possible fates. The first is cellular respiration, which occurs in fed conditions when glucose is abundant. And the second is gluconeogenesis, which occurs in fasting conditions when glucose is in demand. Begin with cellular respiration, in which the key fate of pyruvate is acetyl-CoA. Draw a mitochondrion as follows the outer mitochondrial membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer, the inner mitochondrial membrane, which comprises invaginations called cristae. It's also a phospholipid bilayer. Label the intermembrane space, which lies between the membranes. Label the matrix, which lies within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Show that pyruvate enters the matrix where it's converted to acetyl-CoA. Indicate that this is an irreversible reaction catalyzed by an enzymatic complex called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Illustrate that this reaction also produces one NADH molecule and one carbon dioxide molecule as waste. Remember this is actually two NADH molecules and two carbon dioxide molecules per glucose. Draw a circle of arrows in the matrix to illustrate the citric acid cycle. Show that acetyl-CoA can enter the citric acid cycle. Next, draw the electron transport chain on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Indicate that the products of the citric acid cycle can enter the electron transport chain. Show that the final product is ATP, energy for the cell. Acetyl-CoA is also a substrate for fatty acid synthesis, but we'll not describe this here. Next, let's show gluconeogenesis, in which the key fate of pyruvate is oxaloacetate. Draw a liver, which stores glucose in the body. Draw a section of the mitochondrion, the inner membrane, and the matrix. Show that pyruvate again enters the mitochondrial matrix, where it's converted to oxaloacetate. Indicate that this is an irreversible reaction catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase. Write that oxaloacetate is a substrate for gluconeogenesis. Write that it's also an intermediate of the citric acid cycle. Thus indicate that this pathway also replenishes citric acid cycle intermediates. This brings us to the two final pathways, which occur in the absence of oxygen. Lactic acid fermentation, lactate production, which occurs in humans, and ethanol production, which occurs in yeast and select bacteria. Let's start with lactate production. Indicate that it occurs in exercising muscle and red blood cells, RBCs. To begin, draw an exercising muscle cell. Exercising muscle cells lack oxygen, which slows down the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation and causes NADH to accumulate. How do these cells produce energy? We've actually already drawn the answer. It's glycolysis. Let's redraw glycolysis in the cytosol of the exercising muscle cell. We won't draw it again in the red blood cell, but the same process occurs there. Indicate that glycolysis breaks down glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. Show that it produces two NADHs and two ATPs, 
via substrate phosphorylation. Use an arrow to illustrate that pyruvate undergoes lactic acid fermentation in the cytosol. Draw the product of this process, two lactates, one for each pyruvate. Illustrate that two NADHs are consumed in the production of lactate. NAD plus can then be reused in glycolysis. Thus, the net NADH produced in lactate fermentation is zero. The net ATP is two. Indicate that this process is catalyzed by lactate dehydrogenase and that it's reversible. It's influenced by the concentration of NADH in the cell. Thus, high NADH favors lactate fermentation. As a clinical correlation, write that intense exercise can produce lactic acidosis in which lactate accumulates in muscle cells and causes an intracellular drop in pH, which can produce muscle cramps. How do we get rid of this excess lactate? Show that lactate can exit the muscle and enter the bloodstream. Indicate that it travels to the liver, where it's oxidized back to pyruvate by the same enzyme. Pyruvate can then enter gluconeogenesis or the citric acid cycle. This brings us to our final pathway, ethanol production. Draw an intestine to indicate that this can occur in our intestinal flora. Show that a glucose molecule is in the cytosol. Show that it undergoes glycolysis to produce two pyruvate molecules. Again, show that two NADHs and two ATPs are produced. Next, indicate that pyruvate reduces to ethanol in a two-step reaction that also occurs in the cytosol. Show that the intermediate in these processes is acid aldehyde. Illustrate that two carbon dioxide molecules are lost, one per pyruvate, to produce this two-carbon intermediate. Finally, show that two NADHs are oxidized to produce ethanol in the second step. NAD plus can then be reused in glycolysis. Each step requires a different enzyme, which we'll not cover here. Indicate that this reaction is reversible. Draw a pint glass to indicate that fermentation in yeast is used to make beer and wine. This concludes our diagram.